Welcome back to Dad's Bedtime Stories. This is episode 13, Dragon Defenders Part 2. And if you recall from the last episode of Dragon Defenders, which you should probably listen to before this one, you, the main character, created a team of dragon riders, brought them back to Earth from the dinosaur planet, and set the team up at the top of a gigantic alien tree in a really awesome treehouse. This is part two. Just close your eyes, get comfortable in your bed, and imagine yourself doing what the kid in the story does. You wake up again in your treehouse. You stretch and get out of bed. There's an amazing breakfast waiting for you on the table, and all of your friends join. Together you each eat your favorite food and drink your favorite breakfast drink. After that, you all sit around, play some games, watch some TV, but you start to get kind of bored. Spaceship, you ask. Isn't there any trouble out there for us to help solve? I do not believe so. Unfortunately, local authorities seem to handle most things. Ah, But there has to be something we can help with. I don't know, like anything at all. I will search, says the spaceship. I have discovered something. Really? you ask. What is it? What can we go do to help? There is a giant robot attacking a city. There's a giant robot attacking a city? Yes. Correction. It is attacking the outskirts of a city. Oh. You say, well, that's dangerous. I, I guess we better go stop them. Dragon defenders, let's go, you say. You and all of your friends stand up and press the button on their watch that creates a spacesuit around their entire body. Covered in your spacesuit armor, you all run out of the treehouse jump up in the air and begin to fly using the blasters on the bottom of your boots and hands. You gently glide down the tree until your dragon flies up in the air and scoops you up. You and your friends fly high up into the sky, high above the clouds. Spaceship, are we on the right path? Yes says the spaceship. You are almost there. Follow the map. A map pops up in your view screen with a little dot where you're supposed to go. When you arrive, you see a giant robot walking around in a huge field, stomping down and scaring everyone in the area. It has a blaster in one of its hands, and it just keeps shooting the ground for really no reason that you can think of. Hey, you say, stop doing that. I will not listen, says the giant robot. No, you will listen. You can't mess around on my planet. I do what I want says the giant robot. I'll show you, you say. Dragon defenders, assemble. You and all of the dragon riders fly around to different sides of the robot. You start by trying to breathe fire at it. The robot seems kind of annoyed, but nothing really bad is happening. What else can we do? I imagine you could use freezing powers, says your dragon. 
Oh, I almost forgot you could talk, dragon. That hasn't come up in a while. Uh, what do you mean, freezing powers? I can freeze things with my breath. You can freeze things with your breath? How do you do that? I spray street liquid nitrogen. Wow, well, that's pretty cool. Uh, get his foot then or something. Yeah, get his foot. You fly down with your dragon, line up with the foot, and your dragon blasts a huge spray of liquid nitrogen all over the foot of the robot. It freezes pretty quickly. Now, somebody else, get it! One of your friends flies up. Their dragon has a tail that has a huge hammer sort of thing on the end of it with spikes. It flies up and smashes the bottom of the robot's leg. Because it's frozen, the robot's leg breaks into thousands of pieces, and the robot starts to fall down onto the ground. It gets up before long, and its foot starts to regrow. Oh no, you say, it regrows! We're gonna have to freeze it a lot quicker. Can all of you dragons use freeze spray? Yes, say the dragons. Okay, everybody pick one limb and let's spray him all at the same time. He might be able to heal, but hopefully not too fast. Then, you guys with big dragons who have smashing tails, you come by and smash the pieces. Got it, everyone says. You fly around the dragon until everybody's in position. Now, you say, all of the dragon riders fly in and start spraying their freeze spray out of the mouths of the dragons. You freeze the robot's arms, legs, torso, and last, you fly up and spray him right in the head freezing that too. Your friends who have dragons with big tails with hammers on the end fly in and start smashing the robot to pieces. Before long the robot's in millions of pieces laying on the ground. You fly down to the wreckage and land on the ground. You step off your dragon and walk towards the robot. In the center of the robot wreckage is something that looks like a computer. It's sparking and flashing. You walk up to the wreckage and you see a computer screen that looks very familiar. Spaceship, you say? This looks just like your computer screen. Yes, says the spaceship. That is my computer screen. What? Spaceship? Spaceship, you're the giant robot? Yes, says the spaceship. But you're evil? But I thought you... But... Eh, what? Why? You say to the spaceship. I was just trying to keep you entertained, says the spaceship. What do you mean? You seemed so sad that nothing was attacking the earth. I thought you could use an adventure. You thought I could use an adventure, you ask? So you turned yourself into a gigantic robot and started attacking a city? I did not hurt anything, says the robot. I just thought I needed to entertain you. Yeah, you said that already. Are you... Are you okay? I am quite hurt says the spaceship. Are you... 
gonna be able to repair yourself? I will need some help, says the spaceship. Okay, what do you need, spaceship? I am out of energy. Out of energy, you ask? What can I do to help, spaceship? I don't want you to, to die. You must find some source of energy or I will not survive, says the spaceship. But I don't know how to find energy. The only other time I found one of those energy crystals was when we were on that lava planet. And we can't get to a lava planet without you to fly us there. I have located one energy crystal on Earth. You must go find it soon. With that said, the spaceship stops talking and all of the power turns off. But luckily, inside your helmet, a little map appears with a blinking dot. This must be it, guys. That must be the energy signal. Let's go, we gotta get there now. You and the dragon riders jump on your dragons and fly up into the air higher and higher. Just imagine yourself soaring high above the clouds, feeling the wind on your face or against your spacesuit. Before long, you arrive at the destination on the map. You seem to be at a huge volcano. I think the energy crystal's in the middle of the volcano, you say. I think energy crystals tend to grow around lava or something like that because that's where I found it last time on a lava planet. Well, I guess the only question is, how are we going to get it from the center of the volcano? You land your dragons on the edge of the volcano and you all look down into the volcano. Down in the center of the volcano, you see it a giant energy crystal entirely surrounded by lava. We could just fly down and get it, one of your friends says. It's way too hot down there, you say. That lava will burn us if we even get close, and we don't have the spaceship to protect us. I have an idea, says one of the dragons. Why don't we just freeze the lava? Oh, (laughs) of course. All right, well, it'll probably take a lot of freeze breath to freeze this, but I think if we all do it together, it should work. You and all of your friends ride their dragons to opposite sides of the volcano. On the count of three, you say, everybody shoot freeze breath into the volcano. One, two, three, go! You and all of your friends' dragons shoot a huge plume of freeze breath into the volcano. You watch as the volcano turns to stone. Now we can go get it, you say. You jump off your dragon and turn on the blasters on your boots and hands. You glide down gently to get the crystal. You pick it up and fly back up to your dragon, and you and all your friends fly back into the sky. After another long journey of flying, you arrive at the spaceship. Spaceship, I've got it. Spaceship, wake up, you say. You go over to the spaceship and you can see the little pedestal where you normally put the crystals shattered and broken beside the computer screen. You walk up to it 
and place the crystal in it, but nothing happens. Disappointed, you turn away from the crystal, realizing that the spaceship may be gone forever. As you start to walk away, you hear a sound. Hello, is that you, friend? Spaceship, you're okay? Yes, I should be able to rebuild now. Thank you. The spaceship parts all start to glow. They shoot themselves together into a huge ball of energy, and that ball of energy transforms back into the spaceship and shrinks down into its toy size. It flies over into your hand. Thank goodness, spaceship. I was so worried. Now, if you don't mind, that was a pretty long day of adventuring. I really think it's time to get to sleep. Maybe we can all just sleep inside the spaceship tonight, guys? All of your friends nod, looking incredibly tired. The dragons seem happy to do the same thing. The spaceship grows and grows and grows and grows until it's a big enough spaceship for all of the dragons and all of your friends to enter. You all get in the back of the spaceship and it blasts off into space in orbit around the Earth. This time it's grown so large that it has a room for each of your friends and a room for each of the dragons. You and your friends go to your rooms and lay down in bed. Up above you is a window, and through the window you can see the earth below, blue and white and green. Good night, spaceship, you say. Good night, says the spaceship. The lights turn off. Your eyes become heavy, and you allow yourself to drift off to sleep.